Well, we got the new fans. So we got the, uh, well, self explanatory in the title of the uh, video, isn't it? So I guess this body kit came out in 2023 and uh, it cost $25,000. And you still would have to get wire, your own wheels and you're gonna have to get some, most likely an air management system to run this kit on a real car. So that's an expensive car in the end, you know, I assume uh, FD3S is, uh, might actually be valuable now because there were such cool cars. I imagine one of these cars is gonna cost you over $100,000 to make. But it definitely looks cool, right? So let's uh, look at what the Inno 64 has done today. It's titled this. Uh, they get actual licensing approval in most instances. Where is it though? I don't, well, they got Liberty Walk approval. Okay, uh, well, nice little line outline here. And hopefully this is not a train wreck as far as uh, it's finishing. I bought this at my local store. It looked okay through these sides that I could see. So let's hope that the blind sides are in good shape as well. Okay, standard sleeve with a little card for tightness. Not a good idea to do this, but it is not just falling to the floor, so I guess that's good. I'm not going to take it off the base. It's got Anno 64 molded in. It's got one black screw holding it together. And it's a die cast model. It's cool that they have this uh, striping effect that's found on the car printed on here. This is print. Uh, it's not a sticker. It's not a decal. It's literally paint printed on there. So that's pretty cool. All right, some images that I was able to find. It looks like a Porsche 935, now that I think about it, like a 1970s uh, wide body Porsche. <clears throat> Okay, looking at the front, yeah, that, that looks really close. I mean, even the size of that uh, lower fog light or whatever it is. The hood line there, the windshield, the roof line matches up perfectly. I mean, it's got licensing approval, so I'm sure Aino went there and maybe 3D scanned the car or took proper dimensions and all that stuff, so it looks pretty legit to me. It's obviously pretty hard to focus between two objects at two different distances, but I think that's a pretty good comparison there. Alright. Let's get the pick out. Start with this front wheel. It's like a black BBS mesh kind of wheel, as you can see. Let me zoom in. Zoom. We're at four times magnification. trying to decipher what that wheel's made out of. Is it molded plastic or is this a photo etch piece? Let me get a flashlight. We're going to try a different flashlight today. I think this might be... Hmm. Sorry, I gotta focus again. I can't tell if there's any thickness to that thing, so... Try a brighter flashlight. Might be a photo etch piece, but I actually think it's molded plat some sort of plastic. The the wheel is molded out of the uh, there's a logo in there. It's our upside down, but that's fine. Some lug nut details, and the sidewall is nicely rounded. But unfortunately, the tread blocks at this magnification don't look very good. But hold on, let me just look at my own eyes. Yeah, I can still see the tread blocks to the naked eye. It, it's weird. It looks like it's gonna it's like supposed to run on the moon or something. It's, it's really strange. There's some Advan printing there, but it's obviously hidden away. You would have to be an idiot to ask if this thing rolls, so don't be an idiot. Okay, so we got the front uh, fog light. We're gonna go around this time to this way. We got the light back there, and well, I guess I need more light again. Yeah, it's a clear thing, and the peg, I guess, is what makes it look like it's got a a cone back there. The actual cover has got some black and silver printing looking like it's like riveted on and then we have some texture in those brake ducts and they're painted black. 
Uh, and then the grill is nice. I have a suspicion that grill is a separate piece because uh, the separation of color is so good. And I don't see much behind it, but there's definitely an air cavity behind that grill. So that's kind of nice. Okay. The side printing. It looks like it's all tampo printing right now. I don't see any of the wrinkliness that one would associate with the decal. See the 41, there's no wrinkliness between the numbers. It, I think it's all paint, so this is fantastic. Because they know historically had a lot of decal use. But I actually emailed them one time and told them they gotta stop using decals because long term it's not good for collectability to have a bunch of decals cracking off and all that stuff. Alright, uh, I didn't really continue this side, so uh, let's see. Yeah, some rivet marks there, Tampo Dawn. There's some black here, I guess that's a print of paint. I don't know if that's literally the tire showing there. No, I'm bottoming out against something. It's just darkness, which is fine. What about this side? Hmm, possibly this black paint down there. Maybe even a texture, let's see. No, oh, that's the actual tire. Yeah, so there's the tread. What about this one after all? No, that's definitely bottomed out. Okay, still, looks good. The side mirror is a separate piece, and it's got a reflective sticker. Yep. The side window is being molded. They have some distortion. We'll get to the interior later. There's a door handle here. Looks fine. It's actually recessed. There's a little silver, probably for the lock above it, printed on there. And the black molding there, is it painted? It is black. I don't know if it's on the casting. I think it's on the casting, the, the molding. Okay, yeah, the rear slammed again. I feel like it might be screwed down a little too much. That, that flat spot's awfully flat. Uh, and it's nice that you can read the ad band there. It's nice that it's printed well on the tire. Okay, that logo on that wheel looks a lot better as far as this orientation goes. This must be the fuel filler. Okay, and then let's go around to the back. Interesting. Okay, so this is part of this. This is all the die cast. I have this suspicion this piece here might be separate. Yeah, like the panel gap you can see here. Maybe this is like a plastic piece they had on top. Okay, the uh, diffuser is quite thick being plastic. Uh, well, it doesn't need to be that thick really, but it is. The exhaust pipe is tucked away under there. It's got like some black in the middle. A little bit of a recess that I can feel. Okay. The reflectors back here seem to be printed okay. It's nice that there's a license plate of sorts and it actually has very legible printing. And that license plate is sticking out like this. So I also think it's a probably a photo etched piece of metal being that thin. It's even got the two little mounting bolts, bolt heads there. This printing up here is nice, same as there. We got a little silver for a lock. And then these are pretty good tail lights. You can see there's black printed on the outside surface, but you can also see this is orange and those two are red. So that's that looks pretty good. That's how it looks on the photograph. I am a little curious, where, where would the backup lights be on this? I don't even see them in the photograph. Unless maybe these are backup lights and they're smoked out. Please leave a comment if you know. These are some really, really thick uh, struts, and I think they're the die cast metal. Uh, naturally, it would be nice if those were a little thinner. Interesting, they chose to use the die cast to make those struts. So you can see the white of this wing is different because it's painting white on different materials. This this almost looks cream colored. I lost focus there. Uh, the body almost looks cream colored now compared to the white of that uh, wing. Okay, the slammed here. I guess that's tampo printed. I don't, I don't think that's a decal. There is some wrinkliness or something unappealing about the wing smoothness. I don't know what, if that's just residue. Oh well. Uh, the black end caps are really glossy. There's some silver rivet marks there. Yeah, the die cast here wasn't painted fully, unfortunately, but it's on the bottom, so can't really see too much of that. All right, yeah, what's going on with this? I gotta get a Q-tip. There's some weird dirtiness here. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I guess that cleaned it off. A little more careful here because it's painted. Hmm. Alright, well, just don't use paper towels. Paper is abrasive. You want to use a cotton thing or a microfiber being plastic, it shouldn't scratch. That goes for real cars as well. Okay, the back window here, it's got a little black molding around it, and you can see a little bit of that yellow roll cage there. This striping here, yeah, I guess that's okay. It doesn't go in there, which is fine. There's literally three paint processes going on here. You can see them overlapping a little bit. The Advan, eh, something went wrong with that print. Pretty pretty nice uh, glossiness here. Look at the sharp edge of my LED above us. Not so great there, so a little orange peel but it's fine. Being a white car, you really can't see with the naked eye much of that wrinkliness. And again, I am magnified right now. All right, so the front hood, that looks a lot smoother as well. And then again, all this is tampo printed, so this is really fantastic, actually. Oh, I take it back, because <laughs> now this looks like a decal. See that wrinkliness? where you don't have any of that here. So this is a decal, but then this looks like it could be paint. I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken. Clearly this is a decal. Just look at that orange peel. But look at the stripe over here. Eh, maybe it is a decal. I can't say. If it was a decal, I just feel like this wouldn't have this weird overlapping edge. So, it could be a mix of things. Okay, well, the vents up here have black paint in them. Yeah, actually, they might be separate pieces. Let's see. Get focus again. I can't tell. can't tell if those are separate pieces or not. The separation of color is so good, at least in this one. Not sure, but there's a texture, obviously. This is just paint. You can see the, you know, the, the wobbly edge there because it was painted. And that's fine also, it's just pointing things out. Alright, the wiper blades are molded into the windscreen. The blackout is actually on the outside surface as well as this, but it is looking like it's a tampo print, so that's good. Alright, now the challenge is always the interior. Let's try this flashlight. This is like a pretty low lumen count. But you know what? I guess it's just too low. I was thinking a lower lumen count would help because this flashlight only goes from 1 to 15 but in certain cases I guess I need 15 lumens this is clearly better than the last one alright well the red seats have printing on them and they look pretty good I think they might be bride seats uh, the dashboard has some molded details this is black of course uh, the roll cage is low because it has to go underneath the clear plastic of the molded windows there's really nothing one could do about that if you want to see the top of the roll cage at least. Some brands will actually just not even have the top of the roll cage and that's the way around it but uh, now it seems like Anna wanted to show you that cross that bar right there but it just it definitely looks weird you know because it's literally in the middle of the side window I almost feel like they would have been better not having this this bar right here. Uh, there's a rear view mirror Yeah, molded center console stuff, stereo, air vents, and whatever. Uh, E-brake handle, I can see there. And then clearly there's gauges. So that's probably a decal, white and black gauges. Looks pretty nice. Let me try it from this side here. It's just really hard to hold this flashlight and the, the plinth there. And then try to free up the other hand so I can hit it focus. It's almost like I need to make a fixture, but uh, again, I don't think that would work either. Oh yeah, that looks that looks really nice. I think. Yeah, very cool. Uh, even red needles on that uh, that particular gauge. The steering wheel is like a race wheel, no airbag. Uh, possibly printing on this middle of that steering wheel as well. Maybe some silver of some sort. It's hard to say. Uh, anything on the floor? I wonder if there's maybe a fire extinguisher bottle or something. Mm, not seeing it. Okay, well, it's good enough for me. 
It's interesting. Uh, the Sinnoh doesn't have like separate wiper blades. Some some Sinnohs do, but I guess that's one less thing to fall off. I think you know they probably have a budget for these models, right? And this thing has so much printing on this outside of it, they have to save money somewhere else and not have separate uh, wiper blades. And I think that's probably a good choice. All right, let's look at some other RX-7. So here's the very first generation. This is by Konami. All right, got suspension. It's such a small car. And here's a, a rare one. This is by CMs of the 1995 Acropolis car. And CMs is an extinct diecast brand now. Real shame because I really like our alley cars with all the wacky stuff they slap on them. This is a Kyosho of uh, the initial D FD3S. Okay. So it's got specific wheels from that one of the cartoons, I guess. This is an Aoshima of an FD3S with the Itasha kind of paint my car with a bunch of anime characters uh, theme there. Okay. And then this is an RX8 from uh, same Aoshima some sort of wacky cartoon livery. Yeah, super silhouettes are cool. Very long, wide. Although I still gotta say, I think I still like the rally car more. Uh, I mean, that was an actual competition car. This is just a show car, really. I don't, I don't, be really, I suppose you could drive it with an air suspension, but uh, I'm not sure if it'd make a good daily driver. I don't think air suspensions are comfortable. Uh, I might be mistaken, but okay. Well, uh, again, pretty good, solid effort by Inno. Uh, I'm really happy to see that the majority of everything on this is a Tampo print. So as long as the actual white paint doesn't go bad none of this sponsorship will go bad either there's no weird air pockets below you know the decals and stuff like that also so that's quite fantastic for longevity uh, i'm pretty sure most of us buy these things to keep them right for a while at least don't want them falling apart in three years or something like that so great stuff a uh, great topic of a car it's quite an interesting looking car liberty watches makes crazy stuff obviously and they charge a lot of money for it Man, those people must be so rich. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next uh, NO64 review.